Welcome back to the Sure UK whiteboard sessions. And today's topic is uh, going to cover something called white space devices, uh, which could quite possibly be a topic that not many people have heard about. Um, and actually, I'm not too surprised if too many people haven't heard about um, so-called white space devices. So this session is quite clearly going to cover white space devices. What do they do? Where do they operate in? Um, and why, I guess, we're concerned about them. So over over a past few sessions, including what's happening to the UHF bands and the uh, clearance of the 700 meg band, you've seen me talk about the sort of continuous clearance of UHF spectrum to the mobile sector. Um, and if that wasn't enough to put stress uh, and pressure on PMSC uh, productions, again, ranging from theater to broadcast to sport, touring, etc., cetera, um, we have uh, another source of concern, uh, which are called white space devices. So. I guess the first question is, well, what is white space, uh, let alone white space devices? And white space is a terminology that's been used uh, around the planet um, for decades, for that matter, uh, to describe spectrum that I guess is not used. Uh, and what you might remember is the UHF bands, uh, we as PMSE share this with broadcasters. So I'll draw a few DTV channels in here. You know, we'll have one here. We've got another DTV channel in there. And we'll draw a few more of them there. Um, white space would be any of this spectrum that is unused between these TV channels. And for many, many years, PMSE, uses a radio microphones and in-ears, have made very good use of this so-called white space. And we've always operated a tier below broadcasters. Now, when you look at spectrum usage in general, I think we'd all agree that spectrum is a finite resource, uh, and there's a lot of potential and possibility to make use of spectrum. Um, the view from the regulators is that this so-called white space isn't used necessarily effectively enough. And what I mean with that is, let's, let's take an actual example of PMSE usage, for instance, in London. And if I were to ask you the question and say, how much PMSE usage is there at, say, 5 o'clock in the morning? I think we'd all agree that usage would be next to nothing, certainly fairly limited. And as the day goes on, the usage of PMSE goes up because that's when events start. And probably peak usage is probably somewhere between 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. This is when the Western shows are running. This is when concerts are on. And at that point in time, this white space is in heavy use because this is where we program our radio microphones into. But again, PMSC by nature is something that isn't always active. These DTV channels are always going to be there, but the PMSC or radio microphone channels in between may not always be there. So to make more efficient use of the spectrum, uh, Ofcom has recently um, made a few studies into further usage of this white space. And this is where white space devices come in. So what are actually white space devices? Uh, and I wish I could show you and give you a clear and concise answer, but there are currently multiple potential applications for white space devices. Um, one of them could be a form of Wi-Fi or super Wi-Fi, so it, you know the same way as we use it today, but for far, far larger areas. Another one, uh, another usage of white space uh, comes along with a term that some of you may have heard. It's called the Internet of Things. It's a term that's been used over and over again by MPs to Parliament and other government officials. And the Internet of Things is a means of taking all sorts of devices. You know, this could be things on the street to electricity meters and them all being interconnected. And another uh, terminology for this is machine to machine communications. And of course, the vision for this is to also utilize this white space. Now, I guess in theory that sounds like a good idea, but you can see why this is uh, of huge concern to the PMSE industry. Now, with the clearance of 694 and up, probably around two, uh, 2019 or in the following years, we've already been left with significantly less UHF spectrum. And what do white space devices do? They add in yet another service that we need to share the spectrum with. And of course, to put it into context, where do you typically see radio microphones? Well, mission critical events, it could be political events, it could be you know, national anthems, sporting events, televised broadcasts that we watched. We need these devices to work and adding yet another service that we need to be mindful of is of serious concern. Um, the way this is going to work is, you might recall early in this video I mentioned about the sort of hierarchy or the tiers in which this is layered in. So DTV is at the highest tier, 
PMSC, um, in fact, I'll write this down. So DTV is the top tier. PMSC is tier two. So what that means is any PMSC device that operates in the UHF bands is not permitted to operate if it causes interference to DTV. White space devices would operate a tier below PMSC, which is good news for us. So what that means is white space devices would not be permitted to transmit or receive data in the UHF bands if they cause harmful interference to PMSC. So how do we ensure that white space devices don't cause interference to PMSC? And the practice in which this is going to work is there's going to be a geolocation database. I'll, I'll draw a cloud of it. Uh, and we'll do geolocation. So this database, which will be hosted by a handful of companies, will host the licensing data of PMSC inside of this. If a white space device needs to transmit or receive data in the same spectrum where radio microphones might be operating, they need to refer to this geolocation database. And if here the licensing data proves that radio microphones or in ears are in use in that given spectrum, white space devices will not be permitted to operate there. So there is protection for PMSE, but the key is to license your systems. And I think if we look at the, you know, the past handful of years, this has probably been one of the most misunderstood subjects when it does come to radio microphones, is do wireless microphones and in-ear systems require license for legal operation? It's a subject for another day, but the, uh, the short answer for it is that the only way you can protect yourselves from white space devices is by obtaining a license from Ofcom that basically put you on the map. If you're invisible and you're operating in the white spaces without a license, White space devices will not see you and could potentially use the same frequency that you're on. And of course, the end result would be interference and most likely uh, fairly catastrophic interference as well. So that's sort of an overview of white space devices and what they are. It's not a simple subject to understand. I've only given you an overview. Uh, for further information, please do check the Shure UK website um, and keep continuing to register for the Shure UK whiteboard sessions. Thank you very much.